Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a hero siege guide on the Pyromancer class for season 12. Now, um, I originally started this season as a white mage because I played white mage my last season in season 11 and I really liked it, but I wanted to try something kind of different this time. Uh, white mage does have a sort of righteous fire-like skill, but it's not nearly as good as the Pyromancer class, which has just recently had a complete redo to their entire, uh, well, I wouldn't say redo, but they've had a new set come out specifically for their Righteous Fire skill. So this is currently in Wormhole 1320 that I'm speed farming for XP. Uh, we could push much higher, but the defenses are a little bit difficult, and we'll talk about that in a second. So let's get through it and do a quick little clear. forgot to hit my flask. There we go. It's the new boss flask. It's actually pretty insane. It kind of like doubles my uh, my boss single target. It's pretty sick. All right. With that being said, we showed some content. I want to go ahead and explain a little bit about the, the character and kind of how you're going to go about gearing it. So um, level one, you're just starting off. In my experience, leveling was an absolute breeze. I believe I put points into Fire Swarm and remember respecking is completely free up until like 50. So play around, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to try out different things. Uh, I definitely used Fire Swarm and then Fire Nova up until I got pyro, uh, Pyrokinetic Disorder, which is your RF. So once you get to Pyrokinetic Disorder at like 24 or 36, you pretty much max it and uh, then you need a single target skill. And I believe that was using Fire Swarm. It may be better to use Comet, but again, it's not that big of a deal, just mess around. So and after you hit level 100, um, where we pretty much put one point in Calamity. I don't know how many more points I want to invest in a Calamity because the description doesn't really make any sense. Basically, when you trigger Calamity uh, and you press the button, it automatically applies Comet on every attack. So with my hotkey setup, you can just see I have Comet on left click, and then I have... Oh, sorry. I have my Flame Shield on left click and Comet on right click. So I basically just hold down left and right click as I'm as I'm fighting. So if I go to the dummy and I hit, you can see that's the Comet, right? Every like X amount of seconds, you see it falling from like the right hand corner. When I click Calamity, you can see that multiple will trigger, right? You see how they're like falling left and right. So that's pretty much what we use Calamity for. Um, we use Calamity to proc our Comet. Now, again, I don't know what putting more points into this does. It just does fire damage, but it's not global fire damage because otherwise our RF would do more damage, which it does not. So um, 20 points in Pyrokinetic Disorder, 20 points in Pandemonium of Flames. They just finally fixed it and third degree burns actually works for your Righteous Fire's burn. So because I'm clear speed set up, 20, 20, and 20, that's 60 points. I've got one point in burning because burning also works with it. Um, if I were to just unequip this just for less screen clutter give me one second and i'll show you guys so if you see this right here this number this m this is your burn um this is from that was from firefly but if you look your righteous fire can also proc this burn right as we can see right here that's weird for some reason my burn is gutted it's supposed to take way faster it's not that's very strange Oh, it's because I limited how fast I can actually show it. Never mind. Irrelevant. Um, so, yeah. So, this is our Righteous Fire, the blue one. Um, the blue number is the burn. Or, sorry, the RF. And then the red number is the burn passive. Now, it looks like it's not doing a lot, but it actually takes much quicker than this. You can see because the DPS up here, right? Uh, I just have it set so I can only show every X amount of second. So, anyway. Um, so, we've got Pyrokinetic Disorder, which is the red circle here. We've got Pandemonium of Flames, which minuses their res. We've got Third Degree Burns that also lowers their res. The rest of the points, Comet, which is our skill we showed earlier. And then I have points in Fireflies right now because I use the Firefly set. It's probably better to max out Fireflies and not get Third Degree Burns this high, but they just fixed this, this actual patch so I was testing. Anyway, let's talk about the gearing since we pretty much explained the skill tree. I've never used anything with Meteor. I've never tried 
Split. I have literally never tried any of the other skills. The only reason I don't put points in a flame shield is because as of now, I'd rather have the damage. And the flame shield does not increase your max res. It only increases your resistance and your maximum health. So it's not as good as it seems. It is nice because you have 100% uptime though. Um, if you look at the bottom here, you can see flame shield down here, right? And then it pretty much immediately refreshes. You just seen a little, well, a lot of CDR, like 40%, 50%, which is cap, and then you're good. So, to talk about the gearing, and actually, I just realized this has CDR, which is why it wasn't capped. Now it's capped. Um, so, the number one thing you want to focus on is getting a two-handed weapon. So, I ended up buying myself a Staff of Nether, which is this here, for about 125k. I plus 10 this and used it up until I could get an Apocalypto, which actually dropped for me. So I was very, very lucky on that. Apocalypto you will use until you're ready to drop like 1 mil, in, probably more, um, probably like 1.3 mil, 1.5 mil into a boss rune weapon, which we won't talk about now. This is for like later on, ignore it. So I use Staff of Nether Flame. If you want to look for budget options, it's really hard with the market being fucked right now. So the best thing you can do is look in Discord at what people are selling. So sometimes people use rune words to craft, right? So let me use an example here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so sometimes people will craft with rune word gear, right? So if I control F here, preacher. Okay, for some reason, here we go. So preacher um, does not require any boss runes. So boss runes are the purple ones, right? Preacher, and I think it's Preacher, I may be using a bad example here, but we're kind of trying to make this a short video, right? Preacher, I believe, can roll um, many different damage types. So what happens is, is people end up trying to craft specific uh, damage type gear, and when they get the wrong damage type, they'll end up selling it, and that's kind of when you want to come in and snag it, because you're just trying to use a weapon just for the sake of using a weapon to be able to do damage. Does that sort of make sense? So you do have an option as an example. This is the this is the GG one I was talking about here is Catastrophe, the boss one. So you can either A, here we go, Preacher. You can see it rolls magic, poison, um, and fire. So you could potentially get a really cheap Preacher, uh, which is not super good, but it's definitely way better if you can't afford, you know, a, a Nether Flame for 150k or an Apocalypto for several hundred k. Um, so that would be, I believe, your cheap weapon option. Anyway, moving on to the actual character. Then once you get your weapon, you want to plus 10 it as soon as possible. All of your skills derive from your base damage. Base damage is very big in this game. So. Next part, you want to focus on one of your two sets. So at the moment, I'm using two three-piece sets, which I don't really like because it feels really simplified, but I'll be switching one of my sets later. The set I will not be switching out of is the, <clears throat> the Flame Diviner set. So I use a three-piece Flame Diviner set, which basically is Pyrokinetic Disorder does twice the damage and takes 75% faster. This set, unfortunately, right now is really expensive. The helmet's between three to 400K. Unfortunately, I don't know why. I think the drops are really rare for some reason. Same with the chest, and I don't know about the belt. So what I would recommend doing is getting the Firefly set first because it should be much cheaper, which is um, I use the boots, the gloves, and the charm. So those three pieces give you the Flames of the Apocalypse, which is you now have, uh, you now frequently summon Fireflies and they do 50% more damage. The Fireflies are these little guys that you can see here. So normally you cannot generate Fireflies on single target in any type of way because they're on kill. The set makes it so you spawn them even when you're fighting a boss and they do 50% increased damage. So this is a good like entry level area to, to basically get yourself into running wormholes or higher tier content or whatever it is that you want to do. Then when you get the money, I would definitely try to smag or snag uh, the Flame Diviner set. After you have that, um, you want to work on getting a Damien Soulstone, I'd like to say. Since our, our uh, amulet is not being used by a set, and amulet is one of the highest damage um, like areas besides the weapon, you want to grab like the best thing you can. So that's why we go for the Damien Soulstone, which I know it's part of a set, but it's not your class set. Um, you don't even have to use the set if you don't want to. You just want it because of the massive percent Ellie, flat Ellie, all talents, damage reduction, attack speed. It's just overall very, very good. 
Um, then for your ring option, I'm using a satanic eye because I'm trying to get my res cap for wormholes. It's really difficult because like two, like my chest piece is locked in cold and poison. This has a double poison res. This is fizz and cold. This is cold and poison. And then I finally got fire and fizz. I ended up buying some hands of the flame. So that if we look here, we can see our resistances. When you have like 40%, 45% CDR, you can actually have 100% uptime on your flame shield. So you can actually look at what your resistances is with your actual flame shield active, which mine is capped everything except for lightning at 24, which I'll be working on fixing. So um, as for your hero level, I want to talk a little bit about this part. Before I was in wormholes, when I was just like breezing through content really fast, I was basically maxed into speed, which is 50 points. And then the remaining of my points went into ancient power since ancient power was stronger than scaling flat energy for me. It may be different depending on where your gear lies, but that's kind of what I did. After I started pushing wormhole, I needed to be more defensive. So I dropped my points in damage and I dropped my points in speed and I pumped full armor. So putting in full armor gave me 26, 27 K. That's actually shit. Um, this put me to like, 50k armor but the 50k armor was not nearly comparable to let's use an example here with my life 670k life right if i go to my hero level and i reset this i drop down to 300k so i can either double my armor or double my health and in this instance doubling the health was so drastic because of the mercenary so my merc has 720k hp right he's not really super decked out in gear he's just got <clears throat> he's got like upi sweet shirt for mf he's got bucket for magic fine and he's got gem encrusted tower shield for magic fine and just a random weapon with cdr i don't even know if cdr works for him i do want to see if it does but the big thing about the mercenary <clears throat> is that 35 percent of damage taken by the player is mitigated towards him and then I also boost his health by 35%. And then on top of that, he gives us a shield. The shield scales off of his health, I believe, which is what's really cool about this. So when we look at our Paragon now, look at his health at 720k and look at mine at 300k. So we are just going to pump power of life first. All right. And then we're going to pump flow of life or sorry, extreme stamina. And you can see our health rising, but more importantly, the Merc's health rising. So then when he gives us the Giga Bubble, we're pretty much set for a while. Like, we don't really take much damage. And that is super good for pushing content, doing high tier bosses, etc. <clears throat> I want to bring up one other big part for sustain. Before I found this really OP Sung Lee's uh, Rage weapon, or sorry, Flask, I was using a Witch's Potion. Witch's Potion gives us max health, not very good. Percent health per second, very good. Percent health, very good. And then is a big healing potion. So this is something I'll probably switch back to, but I just really want to mess around with Sung Lee's Unleashed Rage because it's just so strong. That pretty much um, summarizes what I've been doing. As for where I'm going next with my character, since I kind of teased that a little bit, I plan on dropping this Flaming Coin and using my 99% Damien's Cage. Um, this is actually crazy. It gives us speed for our speed farm, energy, uh, stamina, percent energy, attack speed, CDR, Ellie, percent Ellie, and then gives us your attacks have a 40% chance to cause a Nova of Blood. That will work really well with the Sung Lees. I don't know how good it'll be overall, um, but that's kind of what we're aiming towards. And then I can swap out my gloves and my boots to something completely separate. I may potentially look at the Maven because I, you know, super lucky me. Um, also ended up getting Mavis's Mighty Marshes, which are a boss set that gives percent energy and flat Ellie damage. So I may look at these, but I lose CDR, but we should be fine. And I don't know for gloves yet. Everything's kind of like in the air. And then our weapon, I definitely want to try out the new weapon um, that we talked about before that we teased. And that pretty much is everything for my character. Um, to summarize where I farmed and what I did, I'll just go ahead and kind of show this real fast. So before I was able to enter Inferno, I farmed Mining Village and Highland Mines. Basically, from Mining Village running to Highland Mines, there's a boss shrine, so kill the boss. Then in Highland Mines, boss shrine, kill the boss, then vote reset. Another thing you can do, because that doesn't give you much XP, is you can run like King's Garden 
um, all the way through and kill the boss. Same thing in Frozen Lands, same thing in the Pyramid, and that's a really good area for XP. Then after I got bored of that, I was doing Chaos Shrine rotations that you can find here in Mining Village. And then when I got bored of that, um, I just started farming open world content because you can get the boss keys and a bunch of random shit. Like you can get a uh, fortune wheel from the, or sorry, a rift of fortune or whatever it's called from unstable rifts. You can get chaos tower, which is a meme because it never spawns. You've got the chaos shrine, just overall a bunch of really good stuff. So there's a lot of different things you can do. And overall, you're going to end up acquiring a lot of rubies as long as you stick to a concrete method. Um, I have farmed like I still have my other character. I didn't even transfer his gear. I found over 70 satanics just farming. I know that seems like an extreme amount, but just farm. You will find so much stuff, especially, especially in wormholes. Like wormholes, I found so much bossing gear. I found Damien's cage. I found, hello, it's me, Steve. Um, over down here, we found the Mavis's boots I talked to you guys about. I think that's it. But all of this stuff is pretty much all from uh, farming satanics. And I'm not really selling them right now because I don't wanna sit through the trade window for so long. I'd rather just wait. And then when the auction house is out, I'll just sell them. Anyway, I hope that helped you guys out. If it did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, we'll be streaming Hero Seeds for probably another week or so until, I don't know, we'll see. The servers are getting fixed soon, hopefully, TM. So I'm excited for that. But for now, I'm out. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Feel free to drop any questions that you guys have down below. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.